Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to not do live coding of Terraform Variables modules just because, well, I cannot do this forever. Uh, and uh, today I'd like to uh, have pretty interesting uh, review, I would say. I hope it will be interesting for everyone who is listening. Uh, and uh, I will be looking into a tool which is called Port, which is a developer portal, internal developer portal. Uh, and I will have uh, more of us who is a solution architect working on this project. Uh, he will join me in approximately 5-10 minutes. Before that, I'd like to uh, explain what exactly is this tool in my own words, show a couple of things, and as we go further, uh, feel free to ask your questions and tell me if something is interesting or not interesting. That's exactly how this live stream is happening. So without further delay, and of course, Hello, Susan. Right, so let's get going. First of all, I need to figure out my buttons somewhere here. Oh yeah, it works. So uh, port is, uh, if you go to getport.io, you will see that this is no code developer portal. I'm not a big fan of using words like no code. I would rather understand if it says internal developer, developer portal, great. If you are still not sure what exactly internal developer portal means, you can go to internaldeveloperplatform.org and learn about what exactly is internal developer platform. In a nutshell, uh, we can think about this as internal developer portal or IDP is built by platform teams to build golden paths and enable developers self-service. I have no clue where I got this phrase from, probably somewhere from this page. But uh, it's important to realize that uh, internal developer platforms is a way for companies to provide uh, established practice how certain things has to be done instead of allowing everybody full flexibility and do whatever you want and find your own uh, path around it. We can think about introducing tool like uh, port uh, which will uh, streamline this process and it will allow significantly higher and uh, similar kind of uh, solutions being delivered. So feel free to reach out to internal developer platform, read more about it. This site is not uh, affiliated with uh, any solution or any company as far as I understand, but it provides quite a lot of good uh, information. So that's it about generic uh, IDP, right? You may have heard something like Backstage by Spotify, uh, which is uh, getting more and more attention pretty much every week from what I can see. Uh, but today I'd like to focus on Port and what exactly uh, Port has. Well, Port has it all, right? But I will focus specifically on Terraform and what exactly uh, can be used uh, for us people who are using Terraform and uh, what kind of uh, uh, what kind of solutions do we have, what kind of uh, entities and what kind of features Port provides specifically for us. So uh, also uh, there are quite a lot of different features in Port itself. Uh, I will be trying to focus on self-service. Well, there are a lot of different uh, products in it and different uh, solutions. As you can see, uh, it can be used to provide you with software catalog or control uh, different role-based access models and more and more. So let's talk about just self-service. Uh, what exactly means self-service? Well, you may think about this, or at least I've been thinking about this for many years, as simple HTML form available for me as a developer, where I go sometimes and I select something using HTML form, click some button, wait for a few minutes, and then get my stuff done. For example, typical uh, scenario can be a request permission for S3 bucket or uh, change some configuration 
uh, in some files uh, or deploy a new service and so on. All of this is obviously supported in port. And uh, you have quite a lot of different features available when you want to build this. Uh, so for example, all kind of input fields and all kind of integrations are there. So without uh, talking about uh, how all this work and you can obviously go to documentation and read it yourself, let's look into some code which can be uh, added or can be used if you go to, to see the demo. So demo is also available online for pretty much everyone. Uh, I would like to show how I'm using or how I looked into port and what exactly I was able to achieve here. So first, we need to understand what kind of concepts are there. So uh, inside of port, um, inside of port, let me see which page was it. Mm, yeah, probably here. Right. So there are three different concepts inside of port. One is blueprints, which is used uh, as uh, uh, which is used to uh, model data inside of port. And uh, there are a lot of different um, blueprints available. Uh, for example, you can make a blueprint which will have a lot of different properties. For example, GitHub URL, uh, last incident when it happens, uh, some integration with different services like Jira, Slack, and so on. And uh, another uh, concept is called entity. So entities is uh, just a record uh, which can be organized as a software catalog or service catalog. If I look into the UI and click somewhere here, if I look on catalog, I can see that I have few entities here. For example, my TF buckets uh, contains one entity, which is my uh, bucket, my S3 bucket, which I just created. Uh, or if I look into lambdas or my demos, then I can see some other lambda functions which I have created. Uh, all of these are called entities. I think this is the simplest uh, definition which which can be which can be uh, used. And the last one, the last concept which is used in the port is called actions. Actions is a pretty much way to automate certain things. And uh, Actions allow us to uh, implement the most important part of self-service, right? So when we click create something, we provide some inputs and we click execute. I will show this in a bit. So think about these uh, three concepts. Okay, that's pretty much uh, all what we need to know. In addition to this, uh, obviously Port has an API and there is pretty big uh, API uh, available. If you go to API get port IO, you will see Swagger file. You can read through this and uh, think like, oh my God, I can control so many things. Well, yes, you can, but uh, since you, you're still here with me, then you probably have not heard the word Terraform for the last two minutes. So I have some news for you. There is also Terraform provider and Terraform provider supports uh, just three of these entities or three of these resources, sorry. Uh, action, blueprints, and entity, uh, which I uh, talked earlier before. While I was working with this uh, and preparing for this uh, live stream, uh, I found that uh, it would be kind of cool and a bit, a bit of uh, missing functionality. For example, there is no provider for webhooks, uh, no resource for webhooks. So, which means uh, I will not be able to make webhooks. Uh, the way I want it, um, because I want to integrate some some of my existing Terraform systems or Terraform resources with Port. So for this one, you still need to do click ops or uh, use some other automation of your choice. And uh, uh, one more thing which is currently missing in Terraform provider, but I found that it, it's kind of useful, uh, is everything related to our back. Uh, so all users, groups, roles, permissions, uh, I guess they're available inside of API, inside of the Swagger file, but they're not available uh, for me as Terraform provider resources. 
So that's it about Swagger. That's it about API. Let's look into some code, right? Let's look into what exactly um, what exactly is there. So first of all, let me introduce more. More is a solution architect at Port, and uh, one of his hobby is to make developers happy, which is pretty cool, right? So let's see, he has muted himself. Let's unmute him. No, no. Hello. Can you say something? Hi. No. <laughs> okay. hmm. Why cannot we hear? Can you say something? How about now? We can at least see you, but we cannot hear you. Mm, uh, okay. How about now? Oh, yeah. Now, yes, now we can hear you. Or maybe people could hear you before, but now, yes. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Mort. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yes. <Hello. laughs> I mean, it, it wouldn't be my live stream if there are no issues with sound, believe me, every time. But okay, yeah, great to have you here. It's always hard. Yeah, thank you so much. Cool. So let's talk about uh, uh, some things which, um, which can be created uh, as code. And let's talk specifically about the flow. So as I mentioned, uh, that there are a lot of things available inside of this UI. And we can see that uh, we have Builder uh where we can create something like we can create different blueprints uh all of this is documented i'm not gonna to click through this uh, one more time i just want to show that uh if i go to uh, one of these blueprint which is called my tf buckets uh you can see that uh, i have already configured ingesting data from terraform and it has some properties and it has some actions uh, my question to you is, how do you think this can be uh, used, um, let's say, by teams who are using Terraform already right now? So we are writing our Terraform code in first place, right? How can we use, um, like, let's say I wrote a lot of Terraform code. I created a bunch of these resources. How to get them into port? Or should I get yeah. them into catalog? Should I create them one by one or what's what's the flow? How do you think about this? Yeah, so uh, so most of the time we find uh, companies that are already using Terraform to manage their infrastructure and they just need a way to actually document it in one place. And usually the best place to do that is the uh, developer, uh, the, the software catalog, the developer portal. Um, so the ability of the Terraform provider to just give the option to write that additional Terraform code of, hey, I created this S3 bucket in AWS. Now I'll just create an entity for it. And it's in the same file and using the same information it makes it very easy to just document everything with very little work. And all of a sudden you have your entire infrastructure documented in a nice UI that you can expose to developers and members of the R&D. Right. Let me show how this is done uh, in code. If I click enough buttons correctly, I click here, I click here, and can I hear you? Yeah, I should still hear you. I think you can. Yeah, right. Okay, fantastic. So uh, here <laughs> is exactly the piece of code uh, which I have used to create, uh, to create this. So first I... Uh, Added provider blog to uh, to use Port Labs provider, and uh, then I have created. If we look into the buckets, then let's look into this section. So what I made here is that I made blueprint uh, for buckets where I have specified that inside of Port I will only care about uh, these property. Like I don't care about name, I don't care about anything else. I just care about is this bucket private. Uh, so that's the only property which I specified here. And then the rest of resources which I added, and that's pretty much what we already have in our Terraform code, 
is that we are making this resource, we can use different modules, and uh, we uh, specify all kind of dependencies we want. So let's say three buckets with ACL private. And by the way, documentation has to be updated because uh, in examples where this is written right now, it's not going to work since April 2023 because it has to be using this uh, block as well. So just a side note, which I forgot to mention before. So yeah, no problem. I have created this resource uh, like normally before. And now what I need to do is pretty much tell port that, hey, please index this resource as well uh, with this identifier and make this resource part of this blueprint, right? And the property which was specified is private bucket has to be taken into account from this uh, from this ACL. So it's going to be true yeah. or false. So this is what we had before. And now when I say that, uh, okay, if I want to use port, uh, for some reason I need to connect it to port and tell this, uh, like use this resource explicitly. So I'm a lazy person already, and you can probably see where I'm coming. <laughs> uh, this is a, a bit of overhead. So one of my uh, question is, can I eliminate this section? Can I pretty much like in idea world the way I'd like it to be is that uh, I tell port that, hey, this is my Terraform code or, okay, this is my Terraform state file. Uh, please figure out which uh, buckets do I have or which uh, things uh, should be indexed and it can uh, import them into entity. So is there is a way, for example, for me to, to not write this code? for example, or to feed port with uh, my Terraform state file. Because I just find it yeah. a little bit convoluted that uh, I, I was dealing with this one, that's fine. And now when I need to introduce another system, I need to manually repeat quite a lot of things. I need to manually map different properties. Um, yeah. Is there a yeah. way to so, feed uh, Terraform state? Yeah. So, uh, so first of all, we we see a lot of uh, of users integrating the provider with their uh, Terraform modules, and then as they're building their TF vars and making the plan and making the apply, then that one single block that they added applies to all the different resources they have. So in this instance, you did it once, but let's say you extract it into a module then at that point, every new resource you add will use that same code block from the module. And you wrote it once, but it works for everything. So that is one way to use it. Uh, and another option that we offer is, uh, for example, in the case of AWS and Azure and GCP, all of the major cloud providers, uh, we have exporters, which you can uh, use Terraform to uh, deploy. And that way you configure through Terraform the exporter and the export itself deploys a, a Lambda function that scans your AWS and ingests all of the uh, resources in. So you use Terraform to deploy that auto discover or scanner process. Right. Yeah, that's very good pattern to, to follow. And I, I really like when we, uh, when we have this kind of resources and module, all we need to do is just to extend this module and include something extra. Uh, or alternatively, uh, it can be probably done as well, is that uh, there is a module for Port Labs entity resource, uh, which accept something like uh, output from the, let's say, S3 bucket and automatically map names or properties uh, between blueprints and module outputs. Um, this way, uh, it can be uh, probably a bit too too generic, but uh, yeah, the point is that uh, all we need to do is just to extend our module to um, uh, to take care of this. And what about uh, control for this? Like, uh, is there is a way for me to make sure that uh, if I'm 
uh, person who has created this uh, this bucket that uh, I should only create entities uh, which is here or is it two independent things like uh, AWS IAM access credentials and port access credentials these two different things right yeah, so these are two different things, but we do offer, for example, if you integrate port with your uh, single signer, so uh, an Okta or a Jump Cloud or mm. anything like that, then uh, you can actually use the same set of permissions that you use in your uh, AWS as the permissions that you assign to users inside port. Mm. So if a user has permissions on one side, it will have matching permissions or permissions that make sense uh, on the port side as well. Mm, I see. And uh, uh, is there is a way to import Terraform state file as entities? Like uh, I understand that I can update my resources uh, or modules, add this port labs entity resource. But what if I already have uh, I don't know twenty megabyte state file with hundreds of different resources? Yeah, so uh, we do support uh, Terraform import to synchronize uh, between the state inside port and, and the state that your uh, Terraform uh, uh, definition knows about. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is one way that you can uh, uh, do. Uh, we, we sometimes help uh, clients take their existing state and put it inside port as well and make that sync up. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, let's take a look into how this uh, uh, this section specifically work. So I have executed this code already. So it means that I have created blueprint, I have created S3 bucket with certain properties, and uh, I have created uh, entity in port. So what if I now want to change this uh, bucket ACL, or actually bucket ACL, mm -hmm. Uh, bucket ACL from private to to what? <laughs> what is another way? I think pull read. So I think you have public uh, an option. Is it called public or is it something like pull read? Okay, if I change it to public here, then if I run this Terraform apply, uh, what I expect to happen no public is not it should be public read right public read public read okay so what is happening here is that i'm changing this bub uh, <laughs> public public acl uh, from private to public read and uh, terraform also understand that suddenly this bucket is not private anymore which is surprise, surprise, but that's exactly what I expected. So I confirm this one and it fails and because X is denied. Uh, well, I, I expect it's somehow related to this magic thing. Let me see. Maybe not. Maybe that was a terrible idea to even try to do, but that's exactly what live coding is anyway. <laughs> Yeah, if, if it can <laughs> fail somehow, then it probably will. <laughs> and that's yeah, the, yeah, yeah, right. We have live yeah. demos. Uh, private access denied. Yeah, it's because the uh, uh, what was it? Block. Let's see, it's going to be. Um, I'm looking for for the example. Uh, what is it? Block. Block public ACL. Yeah, this one. So fun. So I need to add this um, bucket public ACLs true. No, it should be false. Um, block public policy. I don't know. Let's allow everything. Okay, so now this should be. A bit better. Maybe I'm still missing some depends on between, but we'll see. Wow, that's something good. Five oh two. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's another thing which I sometimes hit 
as well. But I, I guess this is related to the behavior of the provider. Uh, failed to read blueprint 502. So yeah, while I was uh, preparing for this, I sometimes hit uh, these problems. But then I kind of figured out that, um, well, it's life and things sometimes fail. Yeah, um, things sometimes break. Yeah, sometimes they break. And I guess this is not really the huge problem most of the time. Okay, so now it was uh, eventually able to succeed. And the reason why it was able to succeed, let's make it. So I will add this depends just to make sure that uh, my ACL is changed after public access block is changed. Okay, anyway, for the purpose of this demo, what I wanted to have is that my private bucket is private bucket is now set to false. That's pretty much what I want. So if I run this one more time, there should be no changes. Good. So now if I go to to the UI and check out what get port says, it says is private bucket. It says false. That's exactly the case. So this bucket is false. What I can do here now, that's uh, uh, what I would normally do. I see a lot of different entities. I see a lot of different columns because there are a lot of different properties uh, assigned. And uh, I would like to uh, like pretend that for some reason, we would like this thing to be changed here. So I go here and say that is private bucket. Yes, it's now true. And uh, it is changed inside of entity, but I didn't change my code. So now if I run my Terraform apply, it will try to put it to false because that's how it should be. So that's where we are coming to uh, another, like probably the most important section of everything. So catalog allows us to list things and we can understand what exactly do we have uh, and uh, what is happening here is called action. So if I'd like to, uh, to trigger something when the user is changing it, let's say is private bucket uh, changed from false to true, something should happen. And uh, that's where I'm pretty sure we can talk forever uh, about what exactly can happen. And even if we limit our uh, actions or our, our workflow just to Terraform and let's say just to GitHub, uh, it can still be quite a lot. So for example, um, let me show the first one. First action which can be happening is uh, just by clicking here and we can say create new bucket. So this is, a, uh, this is an action which is also configured uh, as Terraform. I will show it in a bit, uh, allows us to provide self-service capability to the user uh, of this entity. So user goes here to my TF bucket and uh, he can specify bucket name somehow. Uh, let's see how it deals with, uh, no, let's verify that it doesn't break with Unicode. That's of course the most funniest part. So now I have created um, this action and I can see that this action is in progress, right? So what exactly has happened here? Uh, I have triggered uh, the action and uh, what exactly has happened? To do this or to look into this, like the simplest way as I understand is to go to my TF buckets, actions, and edit action. So this is JSON representation of what exactly is happening. So this action will uh, pretty much ask user for these inputs, which is in this case, just name, uh, bucket name. Uh, of course, it can be very uh, like significantly more complicated. And I had actually a very good pleasure reading about different types of this in documentation. And I think it's a really good job uh, by providing uh, not just plain types like strings, number, and so on, but also relations. 
so that there can be a drop down list of certain items and this list can be as dynamic as possible. This allows us to think about uh, user interface, which we provide to developers in a very dynamic way. Uh, so we can pretty much uh, fetch information about uh, versions of something um, um, in real time, uh, put it into the form and user will be able to select it. As well as we can select or specify different type of uh, regular expressions uh, in order to match uh, input of the user. Uh, what is most uh, challenging and most powerful in this specific configuration is invocation method. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, port can be integrated with uh, or can be uh, yeah, integrated with very large uh, amount of different systems. And the one which uh, I have uh, used uh, most effectively and most simple <laughs> one is webhook. So when I click this uh, uh, create new bucket, what has happened? Is it uh, port converted input? If I go like this, uh, port has converted input from the user and sent all of this uh, into my endpoint, which is me.io and then slash some secret thing. Uh, here I have a lot of uh, interesting things related to this, like payload is the most uh, relevant one. And I can see that they didn't break Unicode, which is surprising to be honest. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay, so it didn't break my Unicode skills, uh, but uh, it also provides a lot of different information here. Some of this information, uh, which I see here, seems to me a little bit uh, too much. Uh, for example, it provides information about user. So specifically how I was uh, authenticated, my user ID, all of my details, uh, as well as context, uh, like which blueprint was used, which run ID. So which means that uh, if I want, I can use just payload properties and act just based on this input. That's pretty much what, what I want in most cases. But additionally, as I understand, um, uh, I can also specify, uh, or not, sorry, I can also uh, provide information back to port and to tell uh, or to update information in real time for this action. Like currently it says that it's in progress. That's because my uh, my action has not reported that it has finished or it has done something. I can also provide uh, or stream logs in real time, which I think is just pretty cool. Uh, and again, if somebody wants to look uh, how all of this works, like for real, uh, without uh, providing anything, I encourage you to just go to demo, 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 uh, this one demo get port dot io and uh, you don't need to create anything here i mean just register or just log in and you will see a lot of different things in action uh, i'm not going to show all of this uh, but i will focus just on terraform parts so I, I really learned quite a lot just by going through demos so very good job on that one so yeah. talking back talking back about uh, actions uh, can you maybe explain uh, what are the uh, uh, like ways uh, to integrate or to trigger action and what exactly can happen? Like if I click here, I provide some inputs uh, and that's it. Uh, can you imagine what else, uh, like what kind of actions uh, people can write? What is day two operations, which is a bit surprising to some people, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so uh, first of all, we we already offer quite a few integrations. You you displayed the, the webhook integration, but we also have the option to trigger a GitHub workflow or a Jenkins pipeline or a Google Cloud build. Uh, and uh, we even uh, provide uh, clients with a dedicated, dedicated, dedicated 
Kafka topic, uh, which uh, which they can use to take the payloads uh, that arrive from the actions. So if we look at the entire flow, uh, you went ahead and clicked on the create new bucket action and you input uh, the different uh, fields that your uh, DevOps or platform engineer said, I need this information to know how to use this action and what to do with the request you sent me. Uh, and once you click on execute on the form, a uh, port takes the payload and turns it into JSON in a, in a pre-known format and sends it to the integration. So in the case of Webhook, it just sends a post request and that's what you saw on SME. Uh, if we're talking about uh, Kafka, uh, then we just uh, put a new message in the topic and you can pull it. And it's the same thing if we're talking about a GitHub workflow, then we will just send that payload in JSON format uh, to the GitHub workflow that you specified. And then you can take it and use it to uh, create that new bucket or uh, update some uh, permission uh, create a new resource, uh, uh, create maybe a new secret or restart a service or anything like that. Uh, and because the actions work in an asynchronous manner, then like you said, uh, the, the platform engineer or DevOps engineer can update back with uh, logs and uh, that show, okay, and uh, this has started, this is happening now, uh, it's in progress, uh, this part succeeded, we're waiting for some resource from the Terraform provider or anything like that. Uh, and the idea is that at the end, you will also be able to see inside the developer portal, the exact result. So if you created a bucket, then you will see that new bucket, mm -hmm. the catalog, uh, but you will also see in the page of the action uh, exactly what entities were changed by that action. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have that complete flow of, okay, what has happened? What is the result uh, of my action? Did I miss anything? Is it exactly the way I wanted it to be? Yeah, and I find it very useful, actually. Maybe not, 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 not useful is probably a, a wrong word here, but... Terraform does not have any of this out of the box. Like Terraform does not have a trace of audit uh, as such. So to do that, you need to go to uh, some uh, system where you execute Terraform and go through different uh, previous runs and see logs. Here, if you are uh, curious about just one resource, uh, it's rather simple to, to have um, things organized around your entities. So for example, you know that, oh, I'm curious just about this bucket. I know that this bucket was changed millions of times, uh, but uh, I can see a lot of information uh, presented to me uh, just in one view. And I find it very useful because previously, of course, we can look into Git history, into different uh, uh, execution logs, or like uh, GitHub actions uh, logs, try to figure out which run actually changed something, which commit was it. Here, everything can be grouped. And what we can do here is pretty much uh, add another field, which can be last commit or last git sha when this uh, bucket was last changed, for example. And we can always update this information here. I find it very useful to see audit log, uh, specifically who has changed it. Uh, was it me like a cowboy in UI or was it properly through Terraform or was it uh, through some other ways of automation? Uh, so this view, I would definitely pay uh, a lot of money just to have this one. <laughs> so that's really, really good uh, structuring. Like Blueprint has entities, uh, entities has runs, audit logs, and all of this actually has a lot of related items. I don't show this here, but we can imagine that this bucket uh, may be related to some other things. So I really like this uh, presentation myself. Let's talk about something more yeah. complicated than this. Let's talk about uh, ideal way. Like I want this bucket. Okay, so I'm trying to uh, to, to make it a little bit crazier than I, I, crazier. I mean, I want to do it a little bit more properly. 
So if I change something here is private bucket, I change it from true to false, the webhook is sent to my SME or to my uh, GitLab or GitHub workflow, it doesn't really matter. Uh, at the end of the day, there has to be a backend which actually change it. And it has to change it in several ways, in several places. One is that it has to change it inside of Terraform code. And second is that it actually has to change for real inside of AWS or inside of my system. It can happen using Terraform apply, or it can happen using, let's say, uh, Boto or using my Lambda functions, whatever. The point here is that if we look into uh, how this can be used, is this the right place? I have a few of them available here. PR provision, not yet. This one, right? No, this is PR provisioner. Yeah, right, okay. Right, so this repository here, which you shared with me, uh, is a pretty interesting approach. Uh, can you explain what exactly is happening here, like in your board? Because there is no description. Yeah, so the the idea with this action, this is a, a sample uh, action backend. Uh, so in my, in my case, I used to deploy it on a Lambda function. And what happens is uh, you trigger an action uh, in port, it goes to that Lambda, and that Lambda creates a new pull request uh, with new templated uh, Terraform resources. Uh, so for example, uh, the action I have here is to create a new uh, document DB. Uh, you receive those inputs. Uh, there's a templated uh, Terraform resource definition uh, with some TF vars, uh, and we open new pull requests uh, with those new values inside. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can see here how I inject those values, which I received from port. And mm -hmm. that is a way to create a generic create new resource action, which goes back to Terraform and really seals the loop because you trigger the action from port, it goes to your Lambda, that Lambda creates a Terraform resource, opens a pull request, then the DevOps can say, can it look okay, I approve it, he merges it in, and then the, uh, the Terraform provider from port also reports back to the catalog about this new document DB that was created. Right, yeah, so sounds very complicated, I would say. So first uh, thing, which I'm not sure I understand, uh, after you generate this piece of code, who is going to run this? So the idea is that this goes to a pull request in a Terraform repository. Let's say you have a repository you manage uh, the infrastructure for the uh, dev environment in your AWS, for example. So uh, mm -hmm. you open a PR with those files uh, inside that repository. Uh, and then once they get merged, you have a CI process that does the Terraform apply. Mm -hmm. I see. Right. OK, and the integration uh, between port uh, and GitHub workflow, uh, like the pull request triggers uh, GitHub workflow, and then this workflow will run Terraform command, uh, which will uh, create whatever is inside of um, repository, right? Yeah, so the, the pull request will trigger a workflow, which will uh, send you a comment inside that pull request uh, with the Terraform plan output. So you'll be able mm -hmm. to see exactly how my infrastructure is going to change. And if it looked okay to you, then you merge it in and it gets applied. Okay. And uh, when it comes to sending a comment on pull request and so on, I believe it is also possible to integrate it inside of a port as well, right? Somehow, I mean, maybe not creation of an entity because currently entity is not yet created. But is there is a, a way to see, let's say, pull requests which are open? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have a, a GitHub app uh, which you can install and it will uh, scan for you uh, repositories and pull requests. 
requests and workflows and issues. Uh, and that way uh, you can see all of the open pull requests. You can see previously merged pull requests. Uh, and that way you can see if there are any requests like that one uh, waiting for approval. Uh, and we also offer a notification method uh, for ends. So uh, if, for example, you want to uh, you want to expose to your developers a new action for creating a but you don't want everyone to um, uh, to create a bunch of environments and uh, waste a bunch of uh, money and all of that, then you can uh, make that action require approval and say, uh, when a new action arrives, I want, I want to receive a Slack message saying, hey, this, uh, this action is waiting your approval. Then you can go in, look at the details and say, okay, I'll, I'll approve this. And that way you, on the one hand, give your developers the option to consume these actions, but you also put some guardrails in to make sure uh, you're not creating extra infrastructure that you don't need and still keeping some control over things that you find sensitive. Well, yeah, pretty cool. I really like that there are ways to, uh, to use existing templates uh, and in real uh, environment, I see pretty much all of this, uh, uh, what all of these blueprints uh, in big demand. For example, I may introduce a connection with my GitHub uh, just because, well, everything is there already. And I also want to keep things up to date on every commit. So then I will have uh, a software catalog uh, up to date uh, pretty much instantly. And then, of course, uh, well, I, I would like to use my GitHub Actions uh, integrated in the same way. Uh, Kubernetes, let's skip this one. And I also want to have my uh, cloud ecosystem available uh, as is. So it took me, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds. No, a couple of minutes, actually. It took me to deploy this uh, AWS serverless application, uh, which ingests data from my account. So that was pretty uh, pretty cool and pretty straightforward way. Now it has information about uh, about what I have, like ECS tasks, Lambda functions, and so on. Very cool way to get information into the system. And uh, yeah, uh, coming back to uh, to the ways how this specific code uh, is written, and then it is. Uh, Op, uh, it opens pull requests and so on. I also found another example, which is here, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know why it has one star. It should be at least two. <laughs> so now it's better. Um, what I like in this one is a pretty clear uh, indication of how things happen, pretty much what you just explained, right? So port will. Uh, uh, invoke URL, open pull request, and so on. Uh, inside of this uh, diagram, uh, or maybe not, not just inside, but in general, uh, which of these parts, uh, me as, uh, let's say, Terraform user, who knows just about my uh, infrastructure and some Terraform, uh, and maybe I have some GitHub action which run Terraform already uh, or not. Uh, which of these uh, components do you guys have already available for people to reuse? Let's say how to open pull request, um, how to connect to different webhooks. Is it uh, um, yeah? Is it part of port? Do you have it uh, available as open source project? Or can I copy it from some repositories? Yeah, so we already offered quite a few uh, open repositories uh, inside our uh, GitHub organization with plenty of examples. And we also have some examples in our uh, documentation, but our goal is to uh, provide as many, uh, as many integrations from inside the product. So it is very easy to, for example, uh, open a pull request directly. Uh, so we are working on that functionality uh, to really make it easy and you don't really have to think too much about how you're going to integrate the action. Uh, but our current available uh, open source examples make it very easy to 
uh, get started and maybe just change one or two parameters uh, to your liking and or to your use case. Uh, and then you can just get started with that new custom action that is tailor-made for you and for your uh, team. Yeah, uh, I think it's in the right direction. And I can see that uh, there are two people already, uh, Anjan Diri, you may know him, and uh, James uh, saying that port uh for the for the win and great stuff so yeah <laughs> i kind of agree because more i look into this one and more i find uh solutions where i don't have to be the first one and think about oh my god what should i do with this huge uh payload or like how to generate terraform code uh like, like this one uh is better for me i also want to say that uh Writing Terraform code like this can be a bit challenging thing to do. And probably for the first time in my life, I can say that this is the best um, use case for Terraform for CDK to shine. Because Terraform for CDK uh, allows us to use um, programming language, which means it will be easier if we use different programming language construct uh, provided into inputs and tell please render this as terraform code and it will render json representation which is way easier to deal with than this piece of code uh, where you have a lot of interpolations and you cannot really extend it in an easy way especially if you're going to use uh, complicated resource types like maps, for example. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's first time when I say something good about Terraform for CDK. <laughs> okay, uh, well, enough about good things. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay, uh, let's look into um, also uh, another thing about this pull request or about this um, approach. Uh, in some Terraform AWS modules, uh, I don't remember which one, I think security group, uh, I have been using tool, which I forgot the name, uh, to write uh, uh, HCL code. So it's like CLI tool, I, I think it's called HCL write, or yeah, I don't remember, HCL update or how it's... Anyway, the point is that you can use different tools to write Terraform code instead of generating a piece of code like this and uh, do a lot of heavy lifting. I understand that the approach of this example was, uh, uh, was not uh, about that, but in many cases, if this is going to be a reusable pattern where users have a large amount of different actions and you can generate not just a, uh, a couple databases like in this case no not this uh, here you can generate cluster instances uh, update document db or add document db that's not uh, always the case in in many cases we want to create hundreds of different types of resource um, so that's yeah. just the way how this can be uh, simplified yeah okay cool uh, one more thing which I want to highlight in this, uh, in this case, to, uh, looking into this uh, way how uh, this, um, uh, this what is it action uh, is written right now, I find it uh, even more beneficial when people dealing with Terraform code uh, uh, using modules abstraction, because. Uh, here you are writing things okay, but it would be simpler if instead of writing Terraform code like this, it would be uh, just changing input variables or input variables to the module itself. Uh, this can be yeah. done by just introducing Terraform TFRs file, uh, which is very static. Uh, and all what has to happen is instead of generating some Terraform code like this, uh, we can get pretty much these properties which will send uh, to this uh, to this action and update it pretty much line by line inside of Terraform TFRs. 
this is uh, way simpler than dealing with uh, different code. And again, it will be easier for people to review, to understand what's happening. Um, just saying that uh, it's easier to deal with. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and the strategy like you have here, uh, where you generate a resource and then you generate um, port labs entity for this resource is also very powerful. I can see it uh, really, uh, really easy to interact. So you have one module and you combine this with another uh, port labs entity resource, which is actually another pattern, which uh, maybe at some point will be uh, developed uh, on a wider scope. Uh, what I'm thinking is that we have already a lot of different modules uh, out there, like company-wide or public or closed source, commercial. And uh, you may want to have port uh, available as part of these modules right away. Currently, Terraform does not have sort of uh, composition pattern uh, inside of it. So you cannot say like, Hey, Terraform, uh, I don't want to repeat a uh, module or I don't want to fork this module, change something in it uh, just by adding this, uh, um, this resource into the module. Uh, you may wrap external module uh, with something, add port labs like a sidecar and have it uh, as another module. Currently, this is not possible to do and there are few tools uh, I met in the past where code was automatically generated. I think Samson, uh, I forgot right now, uh, since you are from Israel, uh, that's why I remember there, there is a company, uh, uh, Samson up, up, Samson with A, start with A, somewhere in the center of Tel Aviv. I think they, they wrote uh, the tool, uh, which is uh, uh, utilizing this pattern uh, in some way. I forgot the name. I was there in December and I think they released this tool around that time. Anyway, there is a pattern which is uh, uh, kind of starting to happen more and more. And I hope you guys will be able to uh, find a way to put port uh, easier to customers. Currently, it's not so easy as it can be. So if I have my uh, infrastructure, and I say, okay, I need to do, I want to use port as well. I still need to do quite a lot. And this can be simplified, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I have a few things, like a few maybe uh, suggestions even. First one is pretty simple. Uh, since you mentioned that uh, there is support for API. There is support for Kafka even inside of. Uh, so I see this uh, Kafka inside of um, API, and you just mentioned that there is a way to send uh, information to to Kafka as well. Uh, what about more ways where you can stream this data? One of the standard way where you can stream uh, this activity is uh, AWS Event Bridge. Um, are you looking into expanding or adding new, uh, what is it called, integrations or ways where this uh, API calls can be sent uh, easier? Because currently it will have to happen through a webhook uh, integration and then to my event breach uh, boss and so on. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so we're always looking to add more integrations for the actions, and the list of supported backends is always growing. We add a new backend probably every week, and we also have a event bridge on a roadmap. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. event eventually I believe we'll come to a point where every possible backend you can think of or that integrates naturally with your current workflow. Uh, is already supported and you can just trigger port to send it that way and you don't really have to make any changes or maybe specifically start working with Kafka if you're not used to it. You can just use what you're already using today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool that there are ways to do this. 
because I, as I said, I find it really uh, uh, efficient. That I don't want to, uh, I don't want to to do anything extra. But I already have my Terraform runner, for example, in AWS in Target. And as soon as the event hits it from somewhere, currently it can go through some uh, API gateway or some other ways. But if there is native integration, it's pretty cool. Mm, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, let me close this one. Uh, one more uh, thing. Uh, what are the use cases uh, of port um, which you think are a little bit unusual or you are proud of people discovering it? Yeah. Um, so one thing that we're always excited uh, to see uh, people make use of port is uh, working with their and creating a complete map of their clusters. Um, we we see customers getting started with port and after 20 minutes, they have a complete map of everything that is running under clusters and, and they can expose it to developers and, and the, the entire idea of the blueprints and the entities is making those connections between the different pieces of the software mm -hmm. and also give giving developers that actual view that is tailored for them. So uh, I know for me as a DevOps engineer, I want to know the status of my nodes and my clusters and the health status uh, of uh, every specific node in my cluster. But I know that my developers don't care about that. They want to see their specific uh, deployments and stateful sets and things like that because they want to understand how their app is doing and they don't care about the rest of the things in the cluster. And the idea that we, we give you the option to create those tailored views and showing your developer exactly what he needs in his day-to-day -day work. Um, so, so that is a way that we actually simplify uh, life for uh, people at different tech teams and, and really make it easier for them to focus on what matters to them. Yeah, I, as I mentioned earlier, I found this page extremely useful. Uh, and I can imagine how powerful it can be to present information about just what I care about. That's pretty cool. Cool. And uh, you say that people are using it for um, like to map different uh, Kubernetes resources. Uh, are there specific, um, uh, not blueprints, but are there specific uh, solutions uh, for them to use uh, which will populate this information or should they do should they go through the same process as we talked with terraform where they create resource and create uh, entity resource next to it yeah uh, yeah so for uh, for kubernetes we offer a, what we call a kubernetes exporter which is just a simple helm chart that you deploy uh, on your cluster uh, and then it will start mapping out things from the cluster into port in real time. And you can choose exactly uh, what resources from the cluster you want to see in port. Uh, and since it's all, and we, we offer some out of the box configs, which already bring in most of the common resources that we see companies focus on. So you can really get started with five minutes just running a, a Helm chart and two uh, bash commands. And all of a sudden you have your entire cluster inside. And uh, so that really makes the onboarding of new clusters very simple. And we know about companies that have tens and hundreds of Kubernetes clusters, and it, it can get very difficult to make sense of mess. Uh, so by using us, it makes it very easy to focus on every cluster and see only the things that you care about. And... Mm. Yeah. Well, what what you are saying is pretty cool, but uh, the only thing which I don't like is Kubernetes and all of this. Uh, and other plans to make it uh, simpler, I would say, uh, when people use another solution. For example, uh, I already have like in, inside of Lambda, for example, like not in this account, but uh, in general, I have like a lot of different things deployed. Uh, and uh, is it possible for me to import a lot of these things and uh, 
port can automatically figure out the relation between this. Like here, it figured yeah. out that there are relations between regions, but in fact, there are more relations between, uh, let's say, uh, IAM roles, Lambda functions, um, and uh, let's say CloudWatch logs. All of these uh, can be visible here, right? But I, yeah. I still should feed all this information myself. So, so yeah, so uh, th the way that you map this information is by using our AWS exporter. And it also comes out of the box with some common resources, uh, which are connected between them. Uh, but we also have in our documentation uh, examples showing how to map plenty of resources, uh, RDS, SQS, SNS, a bunch of resources from AWS. And uh, since we're using the AWS API mm -hmm. uh, component, uh, then you can bring anything that the AWS API supports and create the connections the way you see fit. Uh, I know that for some companies, they add uh, don't do expose the uh, IAM roles and permissions inside the developer portal because they feel that might be uh, too sensitive to expose to developers or might uh, complicate things for them. Uh, so they choose to keep that information outside of the portal, but that is an option. We do have examples showing how to bring them. Um, so the idea is we, we give you that starting template, uh, which gets you up and running but then you can extend the model and the blueprints and the uh, config the way that you see fit and the way that fits your needs and what you want to expose to people in your team. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that was my uh, question as well. So here I see that uh, environment variables which are used by these Lambda functions, uh, are there ways to mask some of this? So for example, when I trigger a run, uh, I don't think there is a type, or maybe I'm wrong. So if I if I create new buckets, so here type is string, but is there is type uh, which is secret? Yeah. So uh, so we're working on a secret type right now, and it should be available in probably a week or two. Uh, yeah. uh, because we have some uh, uh, users that are saying, hey, we need to uh, uh, send some more secret information. We don't want it. To be to appear later, we want to map it, uh, so we're adding support for that. Mm. I see. Cool. And uh, what about pricing? Is it like one of one of the hot questions which people uh, look? And now there is a comment. Uh, this is an excellent presentation. Thank you very much for the feedback. Uh, but uh, we have not talked about pricing. Maybe now uh, more will say pricing, and you will take your words back. <laughs> yeah, so uh, first of all, Portal is completely self-service and you can uh, uh, log in right now and sign up free of charge, no need for any credit card information or anything like that. And uh, we have a pretty extensive uh, free tier, uh, which offers uh, plenty of functionality out of the box without having to pay for anything. Uh, once you go to the pay tier, uh, it is uh, $19 per month per uh, user. Um, uh, and uh, then you get all of, all of the latest options, uh, get premium support, uh, support for a single sign-on, uh, and uh, that really opens up the way to um, use role-based access control more thoroughly. Uh, but uh, the free tier itself is already pretty extensive. You can resolve the integrations. You're not, you're not limited uh, by most things. Uh, so I suggest if you're interested, uh, get started with the free tier and uh, get a feel for the product, ingest information and uh, see how it works for you. Uh, and of course, we're always happy to chat and hear about your use case uh, and help you map the data and uh, ingest from the different resources uh, and help you get started uh, building the best developer portal you can imagine. Hmm. Well, you, you sound like uh, there is no catch. Maybe after no maybe after five hundred resources, we'll have to pay thousands of dollars. You never know. 
Yeah, so we, we don't we don't limit uh, with uh, information. Uh, you can just use in just as much data as you want. And uh, we know that uh, companies have very large infrastructures, and the entire power of the system is giving you that complete view and being able to narrow it down as you see fit and according mm. to your. Uh, and uh, we're really open about it. Uh, and you can check out our pricing page to see an exact comparison of what you're missing out on if you're not paying. Uh, mm -hmm. But like I said, we we really do have a passion for developer portals and we want to uh, give people the best solution. Um, so we, we do try to give them a very expansive tier that makes it very easy to get started and to really get the value of the product. All right. Yeah, sounds pretty cool. Uh, you say that, like at the very beginning, uh, you say that uh, one of your hobby is to make developers happy. And uh, after listening to you, I can see that uh, you have this passion in, in your blood, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's really cool. OK, uh, I don't have uh, more questions myself. If anyone has any questions, you had the possibility to ask them um, and uh, yeah please go to getport.io i will mention links to a uh, couple github repositories which i mentioned uh, during this uh, live stream uh, in uh, in description to youtube video and uh, yeah that's pretty much it uh, thank you very much, everyone, for attending, and thank you very much more for helping me, uh, first of all, when I was preparing for this, and your help was exactly what I needed. And I'm pretty sure that yeah. more people will uh, will uh, join uh, and will take a look into port, and you guys already do a great job. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for finding time to to attend this. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, everyone. Bye.